thank you very much for having me here. It's a real honor, and that's a very illustrious group. If you have preceded me, I feel not worthy. Um, and this is an absolutely beautiful, beautiful hall. And uh, I apologize in advance for the depressing and often really disgusting things <laughs> that I'm going to say, in it, which is just completely in contradiction to this architecture and the whole spirit of the place. <laughs> so most of what I'm going to say is going to be really depressing, uh, but I'm going to end on an upbeat note and not a false one. Um, I have spent years now studying this subject. And what I'm going to be talking about tonight is not only the fast food industry, but what I think is even more dangerous and more pervasive is the fast food mentality. Um, that's what I'm going to be talking about. I first started my research in 1997 for Rolling Stone on this subject. And while I've worked on other things, I've continued as much as I can to stay up to date with what's happening in this world. And I am not depressed by it. Uh, on the contrary, the more I know, the more I realize that so many of these harms are unnecessary. And one of the, one of the movements that gives me great grounds for hope actually was born in the United States in Pennsylvania, um, not that far from here, in the town of Emmaus. So um, I want to talk about what's wrong, but I want to end by saying, you know, it doesn't have to be this way. And I want to, I want to tell you that in this talk tonight and in everything I write, I'm really, I'm really not trying to tell you what to do. Uh, I found early in my life that uh, people who I loved very much uh, wouldn't do what I told them to do. <laughs> and people who I know really well won't do what I tell them to do. So I've given up on that. I gave up on that years ago. As a writer, what I'm trying to do is make the reader think about what they're doing. My aim is to make people think. And in being an investigative reporter, I took on what I thought was a very old-fashioned part of the job, which was to bring things to light, to show a different reality. And that's what I try to do in my work. My, my second book has a Latin epigraph as its uh, beginning. It's a quote from Homer, and some people told me it was just incredibly pretentious <laughs> to start my book with a Latin quote, but I love this quote. And it pretty much says my own philosophy as a writer and, uh, and as, a, as a person. And the quote is from Homer, and it's sapere aude, which is translated simply as dare to know. Or a more complex translation might be dare to think for yourself. Um, knowledge is power, and that is why there are very, very big organizations and a government of ours that doesn't want you to have it. Knowledge is empowering. And for those of you who are students, I would say there has never been a moment in human history with more sophisticated, more effective, and more well-funded methods of disinformation, of misinformation, and of lying on a scale that is breathtaking. So, my job is to try to provide a different point of view. Not the only point of view, and I'm going to try not to talk too long because, selfishly, I really enjoy the question and answer part of this much more than I enjoy the sound of my own voice. Um, but I would say, um, to those of you who are students about knowledge, uh, it provides you with the possibility, the possibility of taking control of your own life. And in the absence of that knowledge, you are very likely to be controlled. And this is very, very pertinent to the subject of fast food and the fast food mentality. 
I'm going to start by talking a little about the origins of this industry and of this state of mind. Um, it is not an exaggeration to say that what we eat has changed more in the last 30 years than in the previous 30,000. The food that we eat looks like food that we've traditionally eaten, but it's a fundamentally different thing. Uh, there was no chicken McNugget until 25 years ago. And when you look at the list of ingredients in the chicken McNugget, you know this is a really new, odd thing. And somehow mankind survived for thousands of years without it. <laughs> What's amazing is there has been this massive transformation in our food system, in how food is produced, in what literally is in the food. Again, long lists of chemical names that you could not pronounce. And yet this change has happened without most people realizing it. And that's one of the reasons why I did fast, road fast food nations. I was just, I ate that food all my life. And as I started to learn what I was eating, I was amazed that I didn't know about these profound, fundamental changes in our food system. And I mean, I consider myself reasonably well-educated and informed, and my friends, who some of them are really smart, when I realized they didn't know about the power <coughs> of this one industry, about the speed with which it had taken hold of our food system, about these changes, you know, it seemed, it seemed like an important subject to write about. Uh, because food is probably the most important subject. Uh, food, good food, is the foundation we now realize of good health on a personal level. But the food industry is the most important industry. Uh, without it, there's no other industry. And it's only the agricultural surpluses of 10,000 10, or so years ago that allowed civilization to begin. Uh, because we all didn't have to struggle for food. Some of us could think and write and make music. So here is probably the most important subject, most important industry, and most Americans have almost no, no, no knowledge of it whatsoever. We have become such an urban and suburban society that we are profoundly alienated from production. And, you know, and a knowledge of how food is made. This, this kind of book wouldn't have had to be written 100 years ago. Uh, not only because there was no uh, Arby's or Burger King, but because most people lived in rural areas or had family on a farm, or even if they were in an urban area, had to go to a market to buy their food where they would see a side of beef, where they would see uh, a chicken hung by the neck, and there would be some connection between their meal and the reality of things. But we've lost that, and as a result, this country has an incredibly unhealthy attitude towards food that I think our ignorance about food just encourages. On the one hand, we have the poor becoming severely, severely obese, and we have the well-educated and the wealthy suffering from an epidemic of eating disorders and desperate to become thin. And we have the mass media bombarding young women with body images that are totally unrealistic. You know, that only 1% of women will ever be able to have is thin, thin, somehow large busted women. And at the same time, well, somehow, I think that plastics are involved. 